All right, hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and it's, uh, it's your favorite time of the week again. It's Whiteboard Wednesday time. And today, we're gonna talk about local traffic policies. And this is a, this is a really cool feature that started in version 11.4. I'll just write 11.4 up there. Before 11.4, we had the HTTP class. And, uh, and so with 11, so 11.3 and before is HTTP class. So starting with 11.4, we have local traffic policies. And these are really cool. These, uh, you know, a, lot of, a lot of you guys out there like to do I rules, like to write I rules, uh, which are great. It provides a lot of flexibility, a lot of uh, you know, pro that programmability aspect of, of, uh, of things. Uh, but what local traffic policies do is they take some of that functionality that you can do in I rules and move it into these traffic policies. And a couple of things that are nice about these traffic policies is that um, the, uh, the big IP can actually uh, evaluate all the different conditions or all the different uh, scenarios that you may put into a policy and it can evaluate everything in parallel whereas in an I rule it's more of a serial you know one after the other so like for example an I rule you may have a bunch of nest nested if else statements or maybe a switch statement that has a whole bunch of different conditions um, and so an I rule it's going to have to it's going to have to consider each of those and then, you know, if it's the last one, you know, in the, in the list, it may take a while to get down there. It, it consumes resources, that kind of thing. So with the local traffic policies, everything is uh, considered all at the same time in parallel. So it's very, very fast. Uh, it's, it's built in, it's functionality, it's built into the big IP. And so, uh, so as a standard rule of thumb, if, if functionality is built in, it's better to use that from a, you know, from a, uh, a performance perspective. So anyway, all right, so local traffic policies. This is, this is you know, the, the deep inspection of HTTP traffic. And, uh, and so some of the, uh, some of the uh, specifics of this uh, to go through um, are that you need to select a strategy. And there's three different types of strategies. There's first match, all match, all match and best match. And, and by the way, you can set more than one local traffic policy um, per virtual server. Uh, each, each, each policy is gonna do something, but you can select you know, you can set more than one per virtual server. So on the first match uh, strategy, if you select first match, then as these policies are considered or as they're evaluated for that virtual server, then the first one that matches that, you know, that condition is gonna fire, and then there you go. Uh, the all match means if you have more than one policy, uh, you know, uh, selected for a virtual server, uh, the all match is gonna, every single policy that matches that condition is gonna fire. And then the best match is where the big IP has different algorithms to decide, hey, there's more than one policy associated with this uh, virtual server. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna select the best one that matches based on my little algorithm that I decide um, you know, is the best match. All right, so when you create a local traffic policy, you give it a name, you give it a strategy, and then there's a thing, uh, there's this requires section here. Uh, on the requires, you can say it doesn't require anything, these different aspects of the policy. You can say it doesn't require anything, or there's HTTP, there's TCP, there's client SSL, there's a, there's a few different uh, aspects that you can select for requires. Um, and then based on what you say it requires, then there's gonna be controls that, uh, that pop up that are available. Uh, so for example, if you select requires HTTP, uh, and then forwarding would be one of the options or one of the controls that would be av available at that point. Uh, HTTP forwarding, then, um, then you could do, say, a URL redirect, which is a hugely popular thing that people use iRules for, uh, but you can use a local traffic policy now to do URL redirects. Requires HTTP with a forwarding control, and then you can uh, do a URL redirect with that. All right, so once you have all this set, then there are a couple other things that you're gonna put in, and I'm gonna draw these out. So there's a condition, and then there is an action. So on the condition, um, and just a, couple of, just a couple of different examples. Let's say, for example, that you have a request, and, de and depending on the requests that come into your big IP, uh, you want to uh, forward that traffic to a different uh, pool based on the geolocation of the in inbound request. So you can say, you know, condition, um, the HTTP request, um, you know, comes from this certain geolocation, um, then the action would be to pool, you know, to, you know, pool X. And then if, and then, and then you met, so that may be, you know, one uh, policy rule number one. And then you may have another one where it says, you know, geolocation 
Uh, so that's geolocation X, let's say. Geolocation Y, we're going to pool to pool Y, and then, uh, and then you know, all others may go to like a, may go to like a default pool, let's say. All right, so this is pretty similar. You can, if you've, if you've done some iRule programming, some, uh, some scripting with iRules, you can see where, you know, you can do all this with an iRule, um, but now you can do it with a local traffic policy. One of the, one of the interesting things with local traffic policies is that uh, you don't necessarily need to know a lot about scripting languages. You don't need to know about the syntax of it all. Uh, this is all done in the, in the GUI uh, there on your big IP. And so, uh, so literally it's like a click, you know, click, drag, select, and then hit submit kind of thing. So you're not really actually scripting anything out. Uh, you, you do have that option if you want to get in the TMH, T, TMSH shell, then you can, you can build this via the command line, but you don't have to. So it's kind of a nice, you know, hey, I don't know how to script with I rules, but I can do this because I can point and click and drag and that kind of thing. And then once you set all this and, uh, and create the rule or create the policy, then, uh, then the big IP is going to do all the, all the programming on the back end for you, uh, but you don't have to worry about uh, doing all that. Um, another one, another example that I'll, uh, that I'll give is let's say on a condition you want, um, you've got the, uh, the, the uh, shell shock uh, vulnerability just came out. And so if, uh, you know, if, if the request, um, you know, includes, includes that, that, uh, that shell shock, uh, you know, string of characters, uh, I believe it was the parentheses and then it had the, uh, you know, little squirrely bracket thing. Uh, and so if that included that, then it's like, hey, that's not, we don't want to do that because that's, that's shell shock stuff. Then the action, we may want to like reset the connection or, you know, say, hey, kill this thing. And so again, that's just another example of something you can do with a local traffic policy. And you can implement this thing. I mean, literally you can build this policy out in a matter of like a minute, two minutes, whatever. And so think about, think about a vulnerability that may hit your application or that you may be susceptible to. Uh, you can get in there, create a local traffic policy in a matter of you know a couple of minutes, and then uh, uh, deploy that out to all your all your virtual servers, and then now all your web applications are uh, are secure from that, or they're protected from that. So uh, so again, local traffic policies 11.4 and beyond. It's uh, it's 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 again that built-in functionality that's going to be a lot more um, efficient. It's going to be a lot faster than an I rule. And so, uh, so it's nice to know that as you, know, as you upgrade to different versions of TMOS, then you know the different functionality that's available, and, uh, and maybe you can get away from some of the, from some of the iRule um, you know, capabilities that you have today, and you can move it into the actual functionality of the product. Uh, so we'll, uh, maybe we'll do some more of the local traffic policies, and we can do some screenshots and some other videos uh, that kind of help, uh, you know, help help lead everyone along. There's a couple of uh, good um, articles that are out there on Dev Central that we can link to as well. Uh, but we just want to make sure you guys know about this and uh, you know the functionality, you know the power that's out there. So, uh, so thanks, for, uh, thanks for hanging around today on this Whiteboard Wednesday and we will see you guys out there in the community. <laughs>